Guys, I don't know what I want to talk about. Oh my god, I'm stressing out. I have three minutes to tape this. Three. That's it. You get what you get. I don't know what it's going to end up with, but I know my beer's gone and you're getting what you get. I ate all the snacks. I'm going to be fully honest with you guys. All the snacks from the haul are gone. The only thing left is I have a single Cuba Libre and some Funfetti cake. And I, like I said in my in my previous vlog about the haul, I'm really saving the Funfetti for the end days. I have been in quarantine for 32 days. 32 days. I haven't, I didn't even go to the beach before this started and I know that is such a non-problem problem. I mean, I haven't even been in the water. Like I wanted to go outside today and literally just like bucket some water on myself just to feel water on myself. I might do that later on tonight. Just a little skinny dipping in my backyard by myself. That's not weird. <laughs> it's weird, I know. So where does that leave us? Do you want to be here about my couch surfing experience in a abandoned warehouse in Amsterdam? The jungle, the literal jungle fever that I got in Guatemala that almost caused me not to be able to board a plane. Or perhaps it's the time that I got assaulted, physically hit by a bus driver in Vietnam for obeying the law. Dealer's choice. I'm gonna go with the abandoned warehouse because that is a bit of a good story. My friend and I, Desi, we were, she lived in Spain. She was teaching in Spain, I was teaching in Costa Rica. And we have always like met, usually Decembers, and gone on these long trips. This particular year, we decided to go backpacking around Eastern Europe. So we started in like Hungary, and we went up and around and through and all those things, and we ended in, I think we went to London that time, I honestly can't remember. Um, but we ended over there in like the fancy part. <laughs> On our way to London, we stopped in Amsterdam because we were like, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. It's my birthday, let's go to Amsterdam. Let's do drugs, let's get crazy. Spoiler alert, didn't do drugs. <laughs> didn't get crazy because I don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't get crazy, my life is crazy enough. So, we are in Amsterdam and I was in charge of the housing because I had the, I had the couch serving account. We figured we could save a bunch of money in couch serving and so we did. I, I guess maybe I didn't read the full description. I think the guy was kind of elusive. Like, oh, it, you know, you have your own bedroom, you have your own bathroom, it has a huge like living space. But kind of like, you know, at the end and like the very bottom, like just be prepared for like, you know, an unusual living surf, like living experience. And I was just like, he already said okay, no one else said okay, and I was like, whatever, we don't have nowhere else to stay, so looks like we're going couch surfing to this man's house. <laughs> so we <laughs> we get off the plane, no, we took a train there. We get out of the train station, he's like, cool. Amsterdam, good on you, because you have very good, your city is well planned. So we get off the train station, he's like, great, take the tram to this stop, boom, boom, take the tram, we're there. But when we get off the tram, we're like at a, like a, industrial like office place and I was just like I don't understand like this is the address they gave me this is the stop and he was like and so I call him I'm like hey yeah we're here but we were at like an office space and he's like oh yeah that's the right space and I heard him kind of like laugh and I was like what's happening but you know whatever <laughs> so we keep walking like past like all the nice like office buildings and in the far like corner there was like a dilapidated like <laughs> building but you don't pay attention to that you're like well surely we're not staying in the dilapidated building right so you're like looking around like i don't know what's going on he's like no just keep walking and we're like what are you talking about so we keep walking <laughs> and we walk up to the doors of said dilapidated building now i just need to paint you a picture of this building it had no walls <laughs> Like it was like, it was like if, okay, imagine one of those really nice office buildings with like glass walls and like, you know, floor to ceiling, glass, like everything was glass. And then imagine all the glass is gone. <laughs> That's what it was. And Al walks 
this giant six foot something scruffy with a beard black man with like this really dutch accent like oh you know hi hello <laughs> it's just like what <laughs> and desi <laughs> desi and i are just like uh, girl and you know you do that thing where you're like smiling but you're like uh we need to get someplace else to say this is crazy so we go in and he's like hey let me show you and like He's acting as if like everything's normal. Like we're not walking into a dilapidated building. Like he's just like, let me open the door, can you help with your bags? And we're like, do, do you know that you live in a <laughs> condemned space? So we get inside, we walk through this huge room um, and then we get to like a smaller room. Like it's a big room, but in that room there's like a trailer. And he's like, okay, this is where I live. And it's like the trailer inside of the building. And so we were like, like what? And he was like, yeah, I'm a guardian. <laughs> I'm a guardian for this like space. So basically <laughs> he lives in, the, it's like a historical theater and they don't have anything to do with it at the time. So he lives inside of that historical theater in like a trailer. <laughs> left that important fact out of the couch surfing description. I had no idea. So we go in the room, we put our stuff down, we close the door, and then we're just like, you know that whisper talking, like, girl, we gotta get out of here. And she's like, come out, where are we gonna go? I'm like, I don't know, hey, where we go? To a hostel, we're home today, Airbnb, but this shit is crazy. I'm not even watching for this. Like, this is the conversation we're having. And then he's like, oh, let me show you around. So we're like, okay. He's like, these are the bathrooms. And they're like this, the 24 like long bathrooms from a movie theater. So you have stalls. <laughs> and then there's like a common room that has a shower in it. The shower is really hot, but it was basically outside and it was the winter in Amsterdam. So you would have to take a shower outside and then come inside. <laughs> oh my God. This was so stupid. Anyway, then all of a sudden out of nowhere, we hear another oh wow, and it's like a, another giant Dutchman. I can't remember his name, but he was like a white guy. He was like his best friend. And we were both like, we're gonna die. <laughs> we just knew we were gonna die because that doesn't make sense. Like why would we, what was, like what? So we are just trying to keep our cool because we're like, if we are nice and pleasant, maybe they won't kill us. You know what I mean? That was our plan, to be nice and pleasant. I mean, they didn't kill us. And so they show us around, they take us to the third room. So the first room was that big room with no walls, no windows. And it was just like outside exposed, say it has an expo <laughs> exposed walls, uh, exposed to the elements of outside. And then you go into the second room, which I guess we could be like, okay, let me set it up for you. Imagine the first room was like going into like a theater, like an actual, like one of the rooms that has like a picture show, as they say. Then this room that was the living space was like, I would assume where the lobby of the theater was, because it was a little bit smaller and it had like functional little pockets and stairs and stuff. So I think that was where the lobby once was. Then, if you kept going past where we were, there was another giant room, which I guess was like several like theaters, but they knocked down the wall. So it was just a huge, huge room. And there was a staircase, and he was like, I gotta show you something. And we're like, okay, because we're idiots. And he's like, but it's up this like rickety metal ladder. <laughs> we're like, uh-huh, cool. So then, <laughs> so then we follow him up this ladder. He's in the front, his friend's in the back, and I immediately am like, this is how they kill the people they kill. This is how it happens. And we go into like the, like where they put the, um, where the movie room would be, where they like show the movie. So it was like that really high box in the middle of this like space. And we're like, yeah, this is cool, this is cool. Yeah, I really wanna go back downstairs. So then we finally get downstairs. Oh, then he's like, oh, but I wanna show you one more thing. We follow them again because what, what are our options? And we go up to a the roof. And we're on the roof. And it's a nice space, but it's just like 
It's just crazy that we're on the roof of a theater. And then we come back downstairs, whatever, whatever. We start playing badminton because that's what they had. And the, um, we start playing badminton in the, one of the theaters. And then they're like, we'll be right back. I just set this up. Me, my friend Desi. My, Desi, my, my friend Desi is like 115 pounds dripping wet. <laughs> she is like small. And then me, who's not like six foot Dutchman. And we're in this warehouse in the middle room playing badminton. <laughs> and they say they're gonna come back and there is only one exit and one entrance to the space. <laughs> we had made so many mistakes. There were so many errors that got us to that point. Just so many, it was so stupid. So, we get, so then they come back and we don't die. And they're like, let's go to dinner. So we're like, all right, we'll go out. Like, cause you know, we hadn't eaten. Like, we don't know, we, it's the first time in Amsterdam, let's get something to eat. So we go to something to eat. On the way, we discover that the white Dutchman, I can't remember his name, but he's like a diehard Kirk Franklin fan. So we start singing like Stump while we're walking to dinner. We're like, what is, what is going on here? And then the other guy, the black guy, his name's Jeremy. He's Cernerese, Cernerese, Cernermese, Cernermese, Cernermese. You know, he's from Suriname. And so he like takes us to a really good restaurant that serves Cernermese food. And it was really good and we were like, fine or whatever. Then we went back and we were like, all right, well, we're gonna go to bed. So we go into the room to go to bed. We take our luggage and we press, us up, press it up against the door. We move the bed over and push the wooden bed up against the door as well. And we're just like, no one goes to the bathroom. No one takes a shower. No one leaves anyone alone between the two of us for the next eight hours. And tomorrow we're leaving. So we stay in the room and we're there and that's fine. And then, um, the next morning, Jeremy comes out and he's like, you know, I'm really amazed because like, you know, some people they get here and they just like leave and they're just lying so they're leaving because of this, that, and the other, but it's just because I know the way I live is like a little bit different and da 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 We're like, yeah, no, we never thought of that. Like, we're, we're so cool with everything. <laughs> but the good part of it was we ended up having, like he was one of, of that trip, we were together for like, four weeks or four and a half weeks. And of that trip and all of the couch surfing people that we stayed with, that one was the singular best moment. Like I still, we still talk today. Like, just like, hey, how are you doing? Or are you alive? Or how's your house life? But like, it's so crazy because he was the nicest person and he was so like, Platonic, it was nothing weird. Like he talked to Andres, like that he just was a nice guy who wanted to have help people help travelers out and help people stay. Um, but there in the beginning, I thought I was gonna die multiple times. Multiple times it went through my head that like this could be the end and my mom's gonna be pissed. <laughs> what the story is, don't judge a book by its cover. But if that book lives in an abandoned warehouse, maybe it's not the book for you. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>